Well, hi there. I am on video, what, 958,000 on this book, The Central Writings of Christian Mysticism, but I am almost done with it. And I have just reached a section that is the strangest, most bizarre thing I have ever heard about in the uh, universe of the uh, Christian religion. And I have heard some strange things. I mean, just a few videos I read the accounts of uh, Francis of Assisi's Stigmata, of all things. Uh, bizarre. Uh, straight out of a horror movie. But the idea of deification and birthing is even stranger, I gotta tell you. So, what is this? Um, when I began this book, I said that the ultimate aim of the Christian mystic, it seems to me, is to gain union with God. And I suppose that to the Christian mystic who does believe that, uh, the logical conclusion of that outcome is that if the Spirit of God is to abide in the spirit of the believer, and the Spirit of the believer is to abide in God, as the Gospel of John says should be the case, then that means that the Spirit of God and the Spirit of the believer will be indistinguishable from each other. And that is, that is, I believe, what deification means. And if the Spirit of God is to indwell in the Spirit of the believer, and the Spirit of God put the Spirit of Jesus into the womb of of Mary, then the ultimate logical conclusion of gaining uh, union with God and sharing in that experience as the spiritual uh, experience of the stigmata is also a privilege, then we should share in the experience of giving birth to the Spirit of Jesus. That is, I believe, the idea behind birthing. Uh, this was a Oh, a very uh, popular idea, I think, uh, 900 or so years ago. But I looked in the uh, Catholic Encyclopedia online and uh, searched in vain for anything like that. And I asked some uh, Catholic friends of mine, I do have quite a few friends who are Catholic, asked them their idea, their, uh, if they'd had heard of anything like that, they all said no. So uh, <laughs> I think it's kind of heresy, but that... You know, that didn't stop the Christian mystic, obviously. Let's let's read some selections from uh, that time period. What they thought about birthing, which is so bizarre. Let's see. How about Rupert of Dutes? Uh, let's see. Early 12th century, obviously German. Here he is describing a vision he had. Uh, he talks about it's Ash Wednesday. He's a... Uh, uh, contemplating his sinfulness, and uh, he goes on. Uh, Suddenly, I was taken away from the person I was speaking with, and I saw, as it were, heaven above open slightly, and from there a golden glowing mass of ineffable substance from the living substance quickly and rapidly descend. Heavier than gold and sweeter than honey, it fell into my breast, and by its size and weight, woke me up right away. The place where it had fallen at first was quiet for a little space of time and kept itself from any movement, and I also was quiet, laying flat and, aw and awaiting what would happen. But soon it began to move and to circulate in the womb of my interior person, and to what extent of its capacity I do not know. This living thing and true life moved around in a wondrous way, and each circuit was always greater and much larger than the one preceding it. There were many circuits, but I did not stop to count them. In a wonderful and unspeakable way, these floods moved around, one after the other, and poured into each other, until finally the last flood, like some vast overflowing river, led me to understand and perceive that the whole capacity of the heart and the soul was full and could hold no more. Yeah, so the the um, spiritual womb, I suppose, 
is full of the Spirit of God, which is placed there, or the Spirit of Jesus, which was placed there by God the Father. I think that's what's going on. Um, here's, here's something else from Garrick of Igne uh, in a sermon from the mid-12th century. Uh, what, before I go on to that, it, it's, it's really surprising to me how much scripture is actually cited in this sermon to justify the views of, of or the uh, idea of birthing. For instance, uh, uh, let's see, Galatians 4.19, You are my own children, and I am in labor with you all over again until you have come until you come to have the form of Christ, um, yikes! Uh, you know, these people took these texts in the Bible and took them to mean actually uh, giving a sort of spiritual labor uh, to the Spirit of Jesus. Let's see. So, Garrick of Igne, for she who conceived God by faith promises you the same if you have faith. Hence, if you want to receive the word from the mouth of the heavenly messenger in faithful fashion, you too will be able to conceive the God whom the whole world cannot contain, but in your heart and not your body. Yet more, even in your body, although not by bodily work or manner, but still certainly in your body, since the apostle commands us to glorify and bear God in our body. That's 1 Corinthians 6.20. And again, there's more scripture cited in support of this. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Ecclesiastes 11.5. Uh, the reason the bones of Christ are knit together in the womb of the pregnant woman. Uh, Galatians 4.19. Christ be formed in you. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, Matthew 13.22. Uh Spare him, I say, not only from evil words and works, but also from the deadly thoughts and death-dealing delights which easily choke God's seed. Uh, lots more. Lots of uh, scripture cited in this sermon in support of this idea of birthing the spirit of Jesus in the spiritual womb. Wow, really strange. But again, the logical conclusion of things like sharing, uh, seeing, uh, sharing the sufferings of Jesus as a privilege. What's a logical conclusion? We share the uh, the labor of Mary, who gave birth to Jesus, as a privilege. The ultimate uh, conclusion of a union with God: the believer becomes indistinguishable from God. And uh, if Jesus is going to indwell in the believer, there you go. It must mean that uh, we are sharing in the labor uh, that Paul shares in, or the labor of, uh, that Mary had when she gave birth to Jesus. The, uh, the mystic believer must share in this also, I suppose, in a spiritual sense, whatever the heck that means. <laughs> Bizarre stuff. Uh, there's there's uh, plenty more in this section, but uh, on the topic of birthing, and the next section, which I have also uh, finished reading, union with God, has that fine line that is drawn between uh, union and deification. What does it mean to ha be united with God, and yet be distinct from God? Uh, um, there were heresies that were being tiptoed all around in this in, in this field uh, back in those days. So bizarre stuff. Uh, that's about it. Take care.